how to use secondary sources to guide product decisions. But first, what are secondary sources? Um, next slide, please. <laughs> um, so secondary sources in research, they're primary, when you do research, it's primary research and secondary research. And primary research is when you go directly to the source, the people who you want to find out more about, the thing you want to learn more about, and you go and do that research by yourself. You do the interviews yourself, you do the surveys yourself all of that. And secondary sources is the opposite, right? You're relying on secondhand information. Basically, it is research called from other people's research and fact-based findings, um, essentially. And when can you do secondary research? I think in the first talk, we saw that one of the major problems is that there's like, people are like, there's no time for research, or um, there may be time, but like the stakeholders are not really convinced that research is necessary or that it's a good thing to do. And so you could just jump straight into doing your wireframes and prototypes and development or using your intuition and your assumptions about what people need um, and all of that. Or you can use what you have available. Um, and the goal of research, building upon what the last speaker said, is really to to eliminate risk as much as possible. So think of the biggest risks, um, the, the biggest risks in your assumptions and try to find the answers to be sure that you're on the right path. And so secondary resources can help you in even finding insights, but beyond that, it can also help you with exploratory research or inspiration. So you're not sure what problems to tackle or what research to do or um, what features people are requesting for. When you do, when you use second resources, you can find direction for even new projects, new challenges, new research. And then a third thing that second resources are useful for is competitive research. Typically, when you do competitive research, most people are doing like feature comparison. Oh, they have this feature, that other person has that feature, but we don't have it. Or these people ha don't have that feature and we have it. But you can go beyond that. Um, beyond feature comparisons when you do your competitive research with secondary sources. So let's get into the kinds or some examples of secondary sources. So think about it. The last time you had a bad experience with a product, where did you share it with? Maybe besides your group chats? Probably on social media. So people share everything on social media. When you have a bad experience, when you have a good experience, the most likely place you will go to first beyond your friends is social media. Oh, I tried this new product, it was horrible, do not recommend. Oh, I watched this new movie, it was terrible, do not recommend. Watch it, don't watch it, all of that. So this is a very good source. You can simply do a keyword search, right? Think about um, your product, your service. Think about the keywords that are relevant to your product, your service, or your company, and even for your competitors as well, right? So this is where um, extensive competitive research can also come in. You see what people are enjoying about your product, what people are frustrated about, what they would like, what they think is missing. And so you can, and now more people are more aware of terms like UX. So you can even search for things like the UX of, insert your product name or a, um, the service I provide or the name of your company. So those things give you insight about what people wish your products had what they think is missing, what they hate about the experience, what they love about it. And it gives you insight on the problem areas of your product or maybe feature requests that people have like, oh, I wish this app could do X, Y, Z. And then you know that X, Y, Z is a feature that people want. And then you can do more research about that and so on. So another way to do this is by um, looking at app store reviews. When last, honest question, think about it. When last did you actually look at App Store reviews for your product? And if you've not been doing that, you should because App Store reviews, sometimes people just put like five stars and great app, but sometimes people go into details about like what sucks, what they love, what they wish the app had and so on. So you find complaints, you find compliments, you find questions, you find suggestions. And the good thing about questions is like, if you have a feature already and people are commenting in your app store reviews are saying, does this app allow you to do this? Then you know that there's a problem. There's a discoverability problem. You find ability problem with that feature. And that gives you like, okay, this is a problem that we need to solve if people are not finding a feature that we already have that they would like to use. And another thing is you should check on all the app stores your product is listed on. Don't just check on one or the other one. Check on all of them. And a good tip, especially for B2B products where there's not really like an app store that you would download um, 
and install is to check other review websites. So there are many websites that do like review comparisons, um, give feedback about different apps. Basically, they've done the competitive analysis for you. So you can go to those websites as well and see what people think about your products, especially versus your other competitor products. Now, a third way, a third secondary source <laughs> is desk research. So desk research is literally you getting your Google game on and looking for research from other publications, other sources on topics relevant to your product, your features, um, the customer needs that you're trying to solve for, your target audience, your assumptions, all of these things. So you have companies like Nielsen Norman, Measuring You, um, Baymard Institutes, where they publish research on user behavior, best practices, preference, benchmarking reports, and the like. Another good source for desk research is like tech companies um, like Meta, Microsoft, Google, Spotify. They often post case studies, best practices based on the research they've done. And they often post on sites like Medium or even on their own company website. And then the research that you search for doesn't necessarily have to be focused on UX, right? Or, um, or other tech company websites or publications like you Nelson know, Norman and the ones I mentioned. For example, if you're working on something in VR, AR, voice, um, the automotive industry, there's a lot of academic research papers, best practices um, that publish um, insights on best practices, on experiments, tests, things that can answer questions that you might have and you may not have the time and resources to get into, especially in the, in the social sciences, social psychology, human computer interaction. You can search for academic papers. You can check on sites like Google Scholar and find um, valuable research, research gates, Google Scholar and find valuable research there. And desk research can also be internal. It's not always external. So if there are other teams within your company that are able to do research, you might want to see what research have they done in the past and what findings do they have? Um, and you can buy reports from external parties as well. And finally, final um, secondary source that you can look to when you can't do primary research is to look internally, look inwards, look at your company. I, I already mentioned um, existing research that might have been done. But another way to look internally is to look at your customer-facing teams, your user-facing teams, whether you're a B2B product, a B2C product, a B2B2C, whatever kind of products you offer. Um, there are always people within the organization or teams that are always in contact with users. So first, easily comes to mind, customer support. If you have a customer support team, they're definitely in contact with users. Marketing, sales, accounts managers, whatever name you want to call them, there are people within your organization who, it may even be the founder, right? If it's a small startup, founders are usually in contact with users, especially in the B2B space. So talk to those people ask them questions, ask them about feedback, ask them about complaints, ask them about what people are saying about the products and so on. And then a good way to also look internally is to create an internal research panel. So a research panel is simply a group of people that you can reach out to constantly to get feedback and ask questions. And if you do research, you should probably have a panel. It makes your life, it makes recruitment so easy. But an internal research panel is if you're not able to go external, whether from your user base or use third party sites like um, user testing, like the first speaker I mentioned, you can um, look at people on your team. You can have interviews with them. You can do usability tests, show them concepts, particularly when they are similar to your target audience. So for example, if your startup is creating something for new parents, you can look on your team and see if there are any new parents on your team and ask them those questions. Or with the previous example, maybe, um, you're creating a tool for, for amateur artists to sell their artwork. I know he said professional, but suppose amateur artists um, to sell their artwork and then you have people on your team who um, are amateur artists or beginner artists and want to sell their artwork. You can also talk to them. Um, and very important is not just, is, is if you can't find people who fit the specific um, attributes of your audience, it's fine, but try as much as possible to consider the behavioral things, the psychographic things, because those are the things that are really important. The behavior of behavior is what is the more important thing, more than um, demographic things like age and gender and all of that. What is most important is behavior. Cool. Um, and then, so now, what next? You've gone to all the secondary sources. You've found so much, so many useful and relevant things. But before we go into the what next, important to note that 
secondary sources do not replace actual user research, actual going out and doing your own primary research. What they do is a, it's a good starting point when you have limitations around what you can do. Um, it helps you. So when you've done all of this um, secondary research and you have valuable insights, it helps you build a case for doing primary research. It helps you also, if you're not sure, like what particular, um, an example is when I worked on Chrome um, for, we're looking at what are the things, like what can I, what kind of, what should I focus on in what targets? Because Chrome has like lots of different kinds of users. There are people from like, whatever behavior or demographic definition you want to give. There's so many, there's a wide range. And like, where should I start from? I started with doing exploratory research. I spoke to people that I knew personally. I checked the app store reviews and that gave me a sense of where to narrow down my research on. So that is what secondary research can also help you do. It can help you focus on where you need to look at or where you need to ask more questions and do further research. So now what next? So with every kind of research you do, whether primary or secondary, you need to do analysis and synthesis. Very, very important. There's no point in just collecting all the data and then just leaving it there. So what you need to do is create, categorize what you found. So a way that I've done this in the past was I put into feature requests, customer complaints, um, and whatever other category makes sense. So I've done feature requests, customer complaints, um, positive feedback, um, and stuff like that. Just create whatever categories makes sense for your um, product service offering and makes sense and use that to make sense of what you have gathered you can do um those things affinity maps whatever makes sense for you to synthesize just do that second thing to do after synthesizing is to share there's no benefit to doing all of this great work if you do not share you need to discuss the findings with your team you need to discuss what you have noticed what you have seen what stands out to you. You need to discuss all of those things with your team. Um, quantify whatever you can. So for example, if you look through um, the past year of App Store reviews and you can say something like, oh, 10% of App Store reviews in the past year are people requesting for a particular feature, for something, something like that. Or if you're talking to customer support or looking at customer support tickets, you can say, oh, in the past three months, 70% of customer support tickets have been about a specific complaint on this screen or flow or feature or something, right? So, or three and five requests are for Y feature, which other competitors have, but we do not have. And sharing all of this with the relevant people, which usually be the product manager or whoever else is making the product decisions, leads to the next step, which is to help you, which is to prioritize. So once you've synthesized, you've shared, couldn't find an S word for prioritize. So <laughs> prioritize. Um, you prioritize with those people. You need to think about these um, insights that you have. Are they how relevant are they to the business goal? Um, is it low effort and high reward or high effort and low reward? Is this already on the roadmap? So if you see on your um from your research, it's like, oh, most of the feature requests are for this particular feature, but it's already on the roadmap. So you need to ask, okay, do we need to move this up? On the roadmap or do we need to add it to our roadmap is it relevant to us do we want to do what other people are doing and is this um a thing that matters so you need to prioritize all of what you found with your team you need to de define um how severe the problem is are you losing users are people saying things like i'm this because i need this feature this app doesn't have it so i'm going to use this other one instead is that what you're seeing on social media or in the app store reviews or wherever um are you seeing increased frustration in the customer experience that that's impacting things like customer satisfaction scores and all of that so those are the things that help you prioritize and then finally once you have prioritized you need to act it's not enough to synthesize to share to prioritize if you do not act so acting can be you following up with the um product manager if there's not like if you as a designer there's no like additional thing that you need to do is to follow up with like the pm the or whoever makes the decision on what's next acting can you be um be you directly implementing wherever possible so for example if you're saying that people are constantly complaining about a particular flow or screen in the app or the website or whatever you can start making 
design changes, you can create a new um, wireframe or a new prototype to test to improve that flow. Um, Absent can be doing more research to uncover how severe of a problem this is or how relevant of a need this is or how important of, of, a, of a pain point this is to address for your business and to solve. And that's it.